What's Happening Go Community, episode 363 is here, and I sit down with Zach and CB to take a deep dive into the PlayStation experience that had a ton of fun announcements this week. There's also some interesting news to discuss regarding the legal feud between Apple and Epic, and you'll also hear Zach's thoughts on Tales of Rise, and he and I also played a pinball RPG called World Flipper. Yes, you heard that right. This is The Gaming Outsider. Greetings, programs, and welcome to episode 363 of The Gaming Outsider, a video game podcast with a focus on our incredible community. It's Monday, September 13th. I'm your host, Scott Clark, and joining me are my good friends, Zach Parkerson. What's up, man? I'm riding high this week. Are ya? Yeah, man. Matrix Resurrection trailer. Oh, I had man. to watch it 55 times. <laughs> Did you take the I'm blue pill stoked. or the red pill? Well, the, oh, on the teaser site? Yeah, well, I took both, I, just because I had to see Yeah, it. well, of course, yeah, it's... It's, I'm not. A, I'm the, I am of the internet age. I took both, but it, it was fun that they had different teasers. That was kind of cool. Uh, also joining us, Chris Behrensmeyer. What's up, man? Hey, I'm back. You're back. It's been a couple weeks, man. Almost a month. Has it really? Yeah. Well, welcome yeah. back, man. It's good to have you back as always. Uh, gotta give a shout out to a couple of our crew. Uh, I met up with. Uh, our producer, Nate Lucas, and two of our writers, Kevin Honigford and Jacob Gunderson, and all three of these guys happen to be in our D&D group together as well. We all went up to a concert in uh, Milwaukee on a school night, and I didn't, I didn't even tell you guys this part yet, I don't think. We were sitting around waiting for the band to start, and some of the staff came over to us and said, hey, are you guys here to see Coheed? And uh, one of our guys said, yeah, and, said, and they gave us, well, here you go, handed us four VIP passes. To Whoa. get in the front row, like we were in the very front row at my favorite band of all time. It was, it was, it very was awesome. nice. So, but it was. Did a you good... wear the, Did you wear a Coheed shirt? I did not. Okay, I know you're. I know you're debating with yourself. Yeah, I did not wear a Coheed shirt. That's like an unwritten rule. You don't wear a shirt of the band you're going to see. But uh, I got a lot of flack I for th- that. I think only the fans care. I don't think a band would care. No, it's just, it's just there's an old movie with Jeremy Pivens called PCU. Where he is talking to a guy that is wearing a shirt, and he's like, don't be that guy. Because he wore a shirt of the band he was going to see. Granted, it was a college band, so it didn't really matter. But uh, I think I would be infinitely happy to see a Gaming Outsider shirt for the rest of my life. That's true. That's fair enough to say. Well, CB, you've been gone for quite a while, so you've had quite a bit of catching up to do, I assume. Any, uh, anything you've been, you've been playing that's not brand new? Uh, well, uh, let's see. I've been playing Alien Fireteam Elite. This is what I've been. Your opinion is the one I've been waiting on. (laughs) Well, uh, I have things to say about it. Uh, First off, I love it, (laughs) and I hate it at the same time. Oh. So um, the gameplay, the aesthetic, everything about this game is everything I've ever wanted in an Alien game. Mm -hmm. There we. Okay, that's a good start. The glitches are atrocious. I haven't um, hit as many glitches as you have, I don't think. So, uh, our producer Nate and I have been playing this a lot. Oh, uh, I remember you telling me about this, one, yeah. Actually, on two different occasions now, we've been up to the final mission, and we're like, we're tired, um, we'll, we'll come back to this tomorrow. And we both log in the next day, and it's rolled me back the entire, like, twenty last 24 hours played. So we had to Lost replay. all progress. Like everything, and we get back, and it rolled me back again. Um, That's not that I mind because I'm still loving playing it. But you still um, lost like all just, of your. Did you still keep your weapons and stuff? No, I didn't. So I had to no. relevel those up again. Uh, yeah. I mean, to, to give you an idea, Nate uh, has maxed out one of the characters. And I'm, I still have not maxed out one, and we've played just about the same amount of time. Hmm. So it's, it's a little discouraging, but there's so many Easter eggs that they've put in this game that just make me happy. Uh, like some of the, e- uh, the emotes that they've done, like one is uh, Bishop's like knife trick. Oh, cool. Uh, there's another one like Sergeant Apone's like, look into my eye. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love it. The the guns sound exactly like they do in the movies. Like they've they've given this a lot of detail. Uh, I mean, it's, it's like the little things. Like even when you're fighting up against uh, 
some androids in the game, and if you shoot them in the head, they do ashes like little freak out and everything. It just, uh, I, I like, never knew how much I needed this game in my life. This sounds like it was made with a lot of love, huh? Yes, uh, sure. so much. Uh, I, I want to finish it because I want to see like how, where they take the story, because the story is somewhat entertaining uh, from an Aliens like fan perspective, because they're doing some new things with it. Uh, plus, you can't unlock Horde mode until you finish the campaign. Right. And Which that's what I really want. Uh, and Nate, Nate and I have talked at length about this. This game has legs. This game could go on for a while. It would Did not they already be hard. Like add a new class? Yep, you have the new class, uh, the Phalanx. Mm-hmm. Um, so adding new classes will not be hard. I, I'm actually waiting further on down the line for them to add like an Android class, even hopefully. All right. Uh, we had an Android in our party. We just called him Alpha. Yeah. Right, right, Nate? Or Zach? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's a long <laughs> yeah. time ago now that I played it was this game. A long time ago. Yeah. There's Alpha and Beta. Yeah. Uh, but I, I actually can even see them doing a, a DLC expansion side where you're playing the alien side of things. So How would that I, work? You hunt shoot down acid? Marines. So just totally melee, no shooting? Sure, I dude, I'd be all for it. Let's go. Bring in the predator. And let's make some AVP stuff going on. Mm, no, I think I that's think it's even. nice to have something that's just alien and something that's just predator every now and again. Well, yeah, but the last predator thing we got was was one of those like four on one games, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Hunting grounds. Oh man, it it was just free on PlayStation Plus. That's the correct price for that game. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, I, I'm I'm not a big fan of the four v one play style I'm not either. Uh, yeah I'm, i like it i like it a lot so unless, I, unless it's the friday the 13th game then i'm all for it <laughs> i wish i had made more time to play with you guys i know that uh, i think you guys played with kevin yep. at one point as well and uh kevin had the same problem i did that uh he could not get a kill in edgewise because nate just took out everything <laughs> i swear i would like aim my shotgun at something and right before i pull the trigger nate kills it so like <laughs> I well, that's because counted. Nate also played, like, the heavy DPS class. Right, right. Whereas right. I like playing the technician, which is more of a support role. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you the one time you did play with us, you were playing the healer. Well, yeah. So what, like do, you, what do you expect to do for a lot of kills? Like, you're there to keep us alive. That shotgun feels good. I'm not going to lie. I oh, like yeah. It. it really does, especially some of the later ones you unlock. I did play a little with you guys since we recorded last time, and that was... it. it it's just... Dumb fun. It's just it's just great just to sit back and have conversations, and there's there's still some coordinating, and because you guys were, we were I was playing a level with you guys that you had already completed, so you knew, you know, the tricks and what 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 was going on, and that was kind of fun to just like follow your lead and do that. I'm I am enjoying this game far more than I expected to. Yeah, those those challenge cards too can make that oh, game yeah. really interesting. Zach, I didn't tell you about that, because we, we barely saw the challenge cards, but they give you these cards that you you actually purchase with the currency. It's like, it's all I ever bought with the currency was those, because you can get like skins and stuff, but I just don't really care, or emotes. But they give you they give you challenge cards that like double or triple your, your XP or double or triple your um, currency that you gain if you complete some task when you go through it. Uh, there was one that we did where the health packs just randomly work or like you have like a one out of two chance for them to to not work and to actually drain your health all the way to zero. But if you survive th- that skirmish, then you get, you know, triple the experience or something. The one that was driving uh, driving you guys crazy was when they just turn off the tracker. Oh, yeah. Like for it the entire the, run, the entire no tracker. It took the HUD away, which I thought was just going to be the tracker. No, it's everything on the screen is yeah, turned so you don't off. know how many how many rounds you have left you have no aiming reticle so you basically have to aim with you know your spitfire or whatever i don't know what's the correct terminology for that but that was a, that was an interesting run yeah we we made it though we did but they they come up with some really clever ways to just kind of put a, a little twist on this on this one level that you play in and if you make it you get a nice little bonus which is which is kind of fun so the the one that was the most annoying uh, I don't know how you feel about it, but remember you had the one where it uh, monochromatics the screen 
Oh, so it makes it look like it's like black and white, like an old, like not even black and white, like a like a old movie, like the brown. It looks kind like of thing. the um the tracker footage from the movies where they're yeah. watching through the cameras, where it's like green and like oh, it it makes it really difficult, surprisingly, because things blend in. Mm-hmm. But oh, yeah. man, loving it! I'm gonna keep playing this one for a while. So. I will try to play some more with you guys this week. I promise. So, um, other than that, I've been playing another game called A Day Without Me, which is or a in our indie case, game. three weeks without you. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Um, this one's just an achievement chaser. Uh, uh, it's a thousand thousand achievement points in less than twenty minutes. Oh it's wow! Funny you say that because the all, all the images look so artsy online. It kind of reminded me of a bad untitled goose game. Ugh. Interesting. Where, because the game doesn't tell you really what to do, it just says, like, go here. And then you look around for a puzzle and you solve the puzzle. Um, the puzzles um, aren't that great. <laughs> One of them, like, you have to spell the word fire, but when they coded it, it's misspelled, so it's <laughs> F-R-I-E. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. That's brutal. That's amazing. Um, there's another one where you light a bunch of heads on fire that are growing in flower boxes, and then the heads transform into a giant like rock, and Indiana Jones chase after you. What what is this game, man? I I'm like I've gotten all the achievement points because the achievement points only go up to chapter five, but there's a few more chapters after that, and this game is weird, man. Like I'm not sure what to make of it. The story is bizarre. Is it like a if, metaphor or or I I'm will, I think it's kind of like you're in a dreamscape and you're trying okay. to escape but nobody talks, does nothing. It's just weird. You're the only right. character in the game too, so like there's no NPCs, there's nothing. So, um uh, buyer beware. It's it's cheap but know what you're getting into like it's it's not going to be a fun time but uh, easy achievements like you said yeah that's about it i uh, right. don't expect much else um and then i've also been playing surgeon simulator 2 which is free on game pass oh and i didn't know that thank god is it bad it's awful i never played the original surgeon simulator so i played the first one in vr where it's meant to be played. Mm-hmm. And even then the, uh, the track, cause I played it on the PSVR. So my f- first VR experience, um, the tracking was not great. It's, it's goofy, fun, dumb humor, which I appreciate. Um, this one trying to play it with a controller, man, it is rough. Like, it is it is unbelievably hard to do like the most meaningless tasks like pick up the scalpel, but the tracking doesn't work that good as as you're doing with the controller because like you can't extend your arm out further that easily. Right. You have to like hold down left trigger, use right stick, and then press B. And, that like, sounds like yeah, it's super complicated to be doing with a controller. I'm having sounds... heavy rain flashbacks. So it just sounds like why bother? Yeah. Yeah, th- this is something that probably shouldn't have been ported uh, unless they fix the controls. I'm going to actually play around with the control schematic to see if I can't fix some of this. But, damn. It's it's not easy at all. And it's just frustrating because uh, with these like really terrible controls, like if you accidentally like, nick the patient and they start bleeding faster... And then you're like, oh my god, I have to drop the scalpel and then pick up the thing to like stop the bleeding. Oh, I'm I'm having trouble grabbing it and grabbing it and grabbing it. Oh, they bled out. Darn. Let me start again. Do it again. And I'm like, oh my god. But just some of the dumb humor in this game, like the you have to what the first mission, you have to uh do a leg transplant on a guy. And you can just like legitimately walk up and like tear his leg off. Like what? no scalpel, no no scalpel or saw needed. Just tear it off and throw it in the waste bin. I'm like, th- that's really bizarre, but it's it's fun. Or removing people's ribs with a hammer. Uh, 
I, I know that the game has a huge following in VR because of some of the dumb things you can do in it. So uh, hmm. I've been thoroughly, I want to say enjoying it, but until the controls get fixed, that's really hard. Yeah, I, so, I think uh, you you sold me on avoiding this one like the plague. <laughs> yeah, I, I I'll get back to you on it because I'm I'm not done with it yet. So, but other than that, uh, I'm still plugging away on Binding of Isaac. I'm inching ever closer to that final ending. How have you not done everything yet? It's a the dude, the final ending is hard because you have to be. Uh, greed mode like six times, which is not easy in itself, and then it unlocks greedier mode, which is double the difficulty, and then you have to beat that like six times. Yeah. And it's and the problem is with greed and greedier mode is it's random, so you may get really bad items. Yeah, that's, that's the name of the game. It's, it's all about random, you get what you get, right? Right, right. Yeah. So, but still loving it, man. I, I'm really surprised that I'm still playing a roguelike. I'm surprised as well. I'm really shocked. I've been telling you, but hey. Anyway. Hey, man, I love Dead Cells. I kind of want to go back to that instead. But They've done some updates on that game. That'd be fun to go back and revisit. See if I forgot how to play at this point, man. I was I was running through that game, like almost speed running, even though it was you know, procedurally generated stuff, I still felt like I was, you just kind of knew the pattern of the movements of everything, right? It'd be like starting all over now, but man, muscle memory, game. man, muscle yeah, memory. Can, that poor, that poor game is forever linked to my mind to the IGN plagiarism situation. Oh, is it? Yeah. That's what, that's when that, that's what they got busted for. Didn't he get interviewed by, uh, Colin Moriarty recently? He, he did. Did you listen to it? Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, he, he makes a case for himself, but it's, it's rather poor. Oh, really? But unbelievably that the, the plagiarists are trying to make a comeback with like a YouTube channel. Oh, geez. But if you want to hear, you know, someone who staunchly loves IGN, like Alan Moriarty, really go at a young kid who blew the biggest job opportunity of, of most games writers careers. It's a fun listen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You really? You let them have it. I kind of, I kind of want to hear it a little bit. Anyway, Zach, what about you? What you've been playing? I could not be stopped. I immediately jumped into No More Heroes Two: Desperate Struggle on the <laughs> Switch right after completing No More Heroes last week, and I've already beaten this one again. Wow, Dude, these games are incredible. I feel like, I feel like a missing part of my life has been found. They're just they're just so great. Um, I mean, uh, the second the second one uh, is not as good um, as as the first one. I think part of that is they like try to repeat almost the exact same structure, uh -huh. which maybe worked if you had a few years in between games. But when you're doing a back to back, it's just like loses a little bit of the luster. Hmm. But it, but it has a couple more playable characters uh, with with Shinobu, who is a lot of fun because she just uses like a regular katana, not a beam katana. So it's kind of fun slicing up bullets with her. Yeah, is that the one you sent me a picture of? No, I sent you a picture of Sylvia, who is uh, Travis's romantic interest. Yeah, she's like riding a lightsaber in this picture you sent me. It's like, how yeah. can I not like this game? That's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> game of the decade with that picture. Uh, yeah. But but honestly, uh, Nowhere Heroes 2, yeah, a lot of, it, it is fun. The wackiness works a little bit less just because the plot is trying, like, it doesn't hit the tone as well. But. Uh, it does have like a weirdly good love story, actually, like a rather intimate, like two flawed humans kind of finding each other sort of thing, right. which I was not expecting at all. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, man, it's it's yeah, it was it was great. So so it's such a fun ride. You have dual beam katanas in this one, uh, but it's got more fun assassins. A couple a couple who come back from the first game, but man, it's just so much fun playing as Travis touchdown Robin Atkin Downs as Travis touchdown is like one of the best like voice actors to characters it's it's nuts he's just so good he's obviously having the time of his life being travis touchdown yeah and it comes and it comes through in every single scene remind me of the what's the gameplay like in these it's like it's a very simple 
character action game like a Devil May Cry. Like it, um you have you have either so it's a melee a melee you know combat game, but you have either like high or low strikes and there's like a combo attached to each one, but you can't really like intermingle them, so it's very simple because originally you were playing it, you know, on the on the Wii mote, so you can't get too crazy. Right. And then you have to like end I was playing on the Pro Controller and then you like end every combo by flicking the right stick in a direction, you'll do a finishing move where you, like, cut a dude's head off or cut him in half or whatever. Uh, and it's it's just a lot of bloody, dumb fun. And, you know, it's pretty easy, but all the boss fights are where it really comes to life because, you know, you have to, like, engage in certain ways, whether it's, you know, a, a boss who's split into two parts, one's ranged, and then, like, his twin brother, you know, is, like, melee, so you have to, like, try to balance them both, or, you know, maybe, maybe you're fighting a guy who's essentially just Batman, so he's, like, hiding in the shadows. It's Every every boss fight is unique and interesting. Hmm. Highly recommend. There's a spin-off that happens in between two and three, Travis Strikes Again, uh, which is supposed to be like a retro game where Travis goes through different game worlds, like he just goes straight up to Hotline Miami and <laughs> goes and and does a team up level with Garcia Hotspur. No from way. Sh- from Shadows of the Damned. No way. So I desperately need to play this game. So that's, Surprisingly, that's not- I own it. I forgot about that one. Travis Strikes Again? Yeah. I'm looking I'm looking for physical copies are not cheap. I'll tell you that. Really? So I am I am I think but I, I'm trying to find one. I think I picked it up at GameStop for like fifteen dollars. It seems like one of those things where they probably produce a low amount of copies and people who wanted it bought it and they just cleared them out and now now it's like tough to find. But I I really want one. But I'm trying to give myself obviously it's September so it's gonna be hard to squeeze in this one. But I kinda There's want so I, much out man. It's, it's insane. insane. So it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to get to Travis Strikes again. But I'm I'm actually kinda happy about it because I kinda don't want to burn through them, especially with seven seven years passes for the characters in between two and a Travis Strikes again. And and I think that's that's kind of cool because uh, I like I like you know I like to see what happens to characters as time passes. Hmm. Interesting. But I'll be I'll be checking back in with that one, boys. Let me tell you uh, someday soon. Sounds like it, man. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and jump right into the week's news. What do you guys say? Sure. Let's do it, man. First off, some new trailers to talk about. We've got uh, a game called Turbo Overkill coming to PC, Switch, PlayStation, and Xbox in 2022. A game, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, Scamba Snowfall is coming to Steam in Q1 of 2022, and it'll be coming to consoles later on after that. A uh, game called Subdivision Infinity DX hitting PS5 September 22nd. And <laughs> Zach was going to yell at me if I didn't put this one on here. Voice of Cards. The Isle Dragon Roars. Uh, it's not announced for what platforms that is, but that is the new... Uh, what's, you're going to have to remind me of his name. Yokotaro. Yoko yeah. Yokotaro game. So uh, he's obviously very excited about that. And also, both Epic and... Epic? Epic and Apple. Apple yeah. and Epic apparently lost in court this week, so I got some interesting things about that. And Platinum Games definitely wants things to happen for Star Fox Zero and Bayonetta 3 which I thought was interesting in the news. CB, let's start with you. You've been gone for quite a while. Where would you like to start? What intrigues you from these news stories? Oh, well, I definitely want to talk about uh, Apple and Epic. <laughs> Apple and Epic? Boy, if we did if we did uh, episode titles, that'd be a great title for this week. Apple and yeah. Epic. I'm kind of glad that this is finally winding down. Um, I mean, granted, yes, Apple got their hands slapped for like, yes, um, what you're doing is kind of not cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they're, they're allowing people to put links to pay things outside of the Apple store. So that's kind of nice. But the thing that kind of amazes me is the balls on Epic. (laughs) Like, good God. Yeah. Fortnite is not just a game. And I'm like, so you're saying Fortnite is like a way of life? Well, their it's a, argument... It's a metaverse, bro. It's a, it's a metaverse. Their argument, and I'm not saying that I buy it, because obviously the judge didn't, but their argument is that because it's like, 
they're trying to sell it as almost like a social media platform because you can go on there. Remember when they did like the marshmallow concert and um, yeah. there was a rapper that they had in there too, that you could just all like hang out with your friends and watch this digital concert. So they're trying to say that Fortnite is much more than just a video game and it transcends video games right. and is a full it's a, experience. It's a profoundly <laughs> out of touch MLK tribute game sometimes too. <laughs> what? It's, <laughs> you didn't, oh, you didn't, there was, an, there was an event in Fortnite where you can, like, relive the Martin Luther King March on Washington. I did not know that. It's a real thing. It's really disturbing. Like, it's just so woefully out of touch. Like, I'm sure they were, like, tribute to MLK, but really it's, like, kids emoting, you know, on the podium during the I Dream, Have a Dream speech. It's just it's, a complete disaster. Yeah, it was bad. Oh, man. Um, but... Here's my thing, though. Like, dude, it's a game. All because you do things inside the game doesn't change the fact that it's a game. Like, right. get over yourselves. I'm sorry. And then the, this, like, piss poor fine that they have to pay. Like, Epic's like, here, have some pennies. Three, three and right. a half million dollars to Epic is nothing. If the penalty for a crime is a fine... It's only a crime for the poor. Yes. Ooh. Uh, but I, I do like the fact that the judge also said, Apple is not a monopoly. Uh, success is not illegal. I'm like, yeah, I mean, he's not it's, wrong. This I, judge is not, not the only company out there. This, ju this judge is on fire, man. <laughs> like I said, I'm just... I'm I'm just wowed by some of the things that have come out of this. I, granted, I'm really curious to see going forward what Apple's going to do with some companies. Just like, hey, we, we want to put a link to our store. And they're like, you know, we're just not going to allow you on our platform. I have a feeling that's what it's going to boil down to. Like, if they want to do that, then then sorry, you just you don't qualify. Yeah. I mean, to be on nothing the Apple says platform. Apple has to put you on there. Right. I mean, they make more money than they know what to do with at the moment. So, so like, what? What? So what is, is Apple? Because they both lost, right? I mean, it's the best possible outcome for everybody. Yeah. Uh, for us, both like both companies lose money. Apple has to change its policy. Epic doesn't get this weird court win. Like for the people, this is a total win. Right. I agree. I just I'm trying to understand because obviously Epic was in breach of contract. Whether or not, you know, what Apple was doing was right, they were still in, under contract at that point, so that's why they're paying the fine. But the judge is also saying that Apple now has to allow other alternative pay methods that don't go through Apple, right? Yes. So that's why they, that's what we mean by when we say they both lost. Yeah, ba basically they have to do that, but again, because they determine what is on and not on their platform it so doesn't does really, Apple really them at all. lose no not at all because if they're not going to make money off of it why are they going to want it to be on their service exactly is the way they're going to look at it and they're like we're big well, enough I, that we can turn away stuff like that i think you'll find that most people are happy to pay for convenience so you should just let the alternative payment methods there because i know i'm more likely to just pay through the app store because it's quicker and easier mm -hmm. yeah I wouldn't know anything about that. I don't use Apple products. Well, fair enough. But okay, I mean, this, look at it from your your perspective. You're on Google, and you can go through the Google Play Store or go through, you know, third party alternative pay method. Are you just going to do what's easier? Or are you going to go through the extra hoops to pay a different way? Well, I mean, I have a Google phone, so it just does it all through Google. Well, right. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Apple does it through Apple. It's the same thing on our on our phones that you're yeah, doing with Google. Even even if you're buying something through another person's store, like Google pays them, but you're paying Google. So everything well, is just routed through Google. Like I don't have to click a link, go to someone else. Well, that's that's what we're saying. That's what <clears throat> that's the way it's been with Apple all along. Is but Apple wouldn't allow you to do it another way. So you, the only way you could do it was to pay Apple, and then Apple would give whatever party their cut, right? Yeah. And then there was no other option. With Google, you can actually 
you can pay other ways. And the fact that yeah. you don't even know that there are other ways goes to show just how much it doesn't really matter almost, right? I mean, the only the only ones that I know that I use other ways is like PayPal and eBay. Right, because but do you, do, well, but do you I, use that when you're using an app, a Google app? Well, I don't really download apps that cost me money. So I, I've never really run into that situation. Fair enough. But like, think if you're playing, like your son plays Fortnite and they always want to purchase those V-Bucks, right? So yeah. if you were going to purchase V-Bucks, if you're, let's assume your son was playing Fortnite on your Google phone or on his Google phone, let's assume he had one and you wanted to, and he wanted to purchase V-Bucks, you would just buy it through the Google, you would, you would purchase it through by way of Google and then Epic would get their cut, right? Yeah. What Epic did, what Epic was trying to do is they were offering alternate payment ways for you to be able to pay and buy those V-Bucks. No, no, I, I get what they're trying to do. It's just I've, I can't really speak from experience because I've never no, no. had to deal with it. Right, um, yeah, I, I don't I mean, do if they it. made it, if they made it easy to do, I wouldn't care. I mean, whether and I think whether that's, that's Zach's point is that, that it's easier just to go through the method that it was, that it's designed, right? It's easier. It's a convenience thing just to go through Google or to go through Apple because we don't really care. We're paying the same amount of money, right? We don't care if we're, yeah. if we're you know, w which way it gets distributed unless you're just like a hardcore Apple loyalist or a hardcore Google loyalist, which, you know, they don't, they don't need, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And I, I will say, I understand what Epic was trying to do. Like, Hey, like this is our stuff. Why are we paying you money for our stuff? But I also but, see Apple's point of view. We're providing a service for you to put your thing on. That's like when, when, when someone makes a game for Xbox or PlayStation, Xbox and PlayStation get a cut of that, right? That that actually does make an interesting point because with Apple, I not with Apple, but with Xbox and PlayStation, like everybody buys everything through the PlayStation Store or the Xbox Store, right? Would something like this translate across to them? That's what we've been talking about when this whole thing started: is that this yeah. could potentially be a game changer for the online marketplace for everything in the future. You know, consoles, phones, PC, everything could just could really just be upended. And I don't know. You after this though, it feels like it's. If it, does it feel like it's fizzling out a little bit to you, Zach? Like it's you know we're talking about it obviously, but it just feels like it's done. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it went on too long for people to pay attention. Well, yeah, I mean, look yeah. what happened with Activision, right? I mean, that's just gamers, especially gamers, are quicker to forget than any other. Community, it feels like. I don't know if that's just because we're more ingrained or what, but it feels like gamers are just immediately forgive for the next potential, you know, hit of their own endorphin rush. Yeah, so, pretty much. So actually caring about this for this long seems impossible for most. I mean, I mean, think about I feel like it's so underreported on, on the major game sites. Yeah. Underreported or overreported? Underreported. Yeah, I feel like I, I think the article that I linked on our format actually wasn't even a video game uh, journalist site. It wasn't a, a, a video game publication. I believe it was like CNBC, CNBC or something like that. Yeah. Like it was, so, I mean, it was, it was just like a regular news outlet that was not specifically catering to, to video, fans of video games. Um, that's where I had to get my facts from for this, which is. Saying, so, it def so yeah, it definitely fizzled out. Mm -hmm. It was like a hot, it's like, it's like news stories are a big deal for about a week in our, in our, in our universe. And then right. we just, just moved on to something else. One, once you get outside of that news cycle that you're in, things tend to get forgotten. Mm -hmm. Which is sad, especially nobody's talking about Activision anymore. Yeah, man. <laughs> and, and they're like, they're so, oh, they just like taking their name off of all the trailers and stuff. Like they're basically admitting their guilt. And no one cares. Yep. It's very strange. It's very, very strange. I mean, I see a couple people here and there on Twitter, but. You know, more people are complaining about boat animations and God of War than than Activision. Oh my God, what a headache! <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, Zach, you want? I assume you're gonna want to talk about Platinum. Well, Platinum's exciting. I'm, I'm sure we'll get there. But guys, we got to talk about Voice of Cards, the Isle Dragon Roars. Okay. 
Okay, it's the full Yoko Taro crew. It is so Yoko Taro's creative director, Yosuke Saito, his producer is on it, and Keiichi Okabe, who's the composer of Nier, which I know you're now a fan of, Scott. Yes, <laughs> and, I do. They, I did listen to the soundtrack a few times. And then uh, Kimihiko Fujisaka, who is the concept artist of uh, Dragon, the Dragon Guard series, as well as the original Nier back in 2010, is doing the art for the cards. This is pretty exciting. What's most exciting to me is honestly that uh, Yokotaro clarified that this is so. This is like a card RPG, but he but he was hesitant to call it like a card battling RPG. So like I have no I have no idea what I'm getting in for with this game, but it's exciting because he confirmed it will not be a social game. So it'll not be like you know a phone game trying to get your dollars. Like it's supposed to be like a premium RPG experience, which is I feel like a, I feel like especially for cards, but um, you know, like it calls him like Slate Spire or something, and then it's not connected to the Dragon Near universe at all, and that's kind of refreshing. Really, why is that? Because ref- it's just something fresh and new, and you're not, you're not like dipping back in the well. I thought you'd want to want it to be about there. Well, I'm and I'm sure we'll get a Near Three eventually, but it's nice to see Yoko Taro flex creative muscles where he doesn't have to worry about like that continuity in that universe. Like he okay. can just he can just tell a story. Uh, that sounds that sounds pretty rad. And obviously you're excited. I mean, you, you, Yoko Taro could make a Mario game, and I'm pretty sure you'd play it. Oh, man. Could you imagine? You'd probably be playing as a Piranha Plant or something. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. So, yeah, voice yeah, of cards. Man, 2021 has been a good year for Yoko Taro fans. Let me tell you. I, I can see that. I, I want to talk about one of these trailers, too, before we get on to Platinum. Uh, there's this one that stood out to me. It's called, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but Scamba Snowfall. This is a Steam game, and... It's basically a, th- a third-person action adventure game. It has some uh, exploration and puzzles, but I-, I want you guys, if you get a chance, to check out this trailer. It is a gorgeous-looking trailer. I-, I-, I will say the character models look a little uh, looks a- look a little uh, DreamWorks animation to me, but the environments look absolutely stunning. It looks like a a game that is just artistic enough that uh, I kind of have to play this one. So if you get a chance, it's spelled S-K-A-M-B-A, Snowfall, and there is like a, I don't know what you call the little the little accent mark over the A if you're having trouble uh, Googling it, but uh, I am I am very intrigued by this game. Uh, I, I got a, a press release on it, and it looks, it looks like something I need to play. I know it's coming to consoles later. I'll probably have to wait for consoles, but uh, look for that one on Steam quarter one of uh of next year it looks i don't know i I, i've i think i was talking to zach today like i'm in the mood for a calm relaxing game i'm I'm gonna be playing a game for next week that was that was referred to as like a bubble bath for your brain or something and this game this this game uh, seems up that alley of um just a relaxing experience that you can just kind of soak up the art style so take a look at that one when you get a chance okay man Platinum. Sure, Platinum. They were the they were asked at an interview about a state of a couple of their Nintendo projects, Star Fox Zero, uh being trained to Wii U, uh where a two a sushi and Ava responded with uh, about bringing it to the Switch responded with it kind of depends on what's in the realm of actual possibility. But yeah, if the chance came up, it's definitely something we'd like to think about. The important thing to remember here is that because it's Nintendo's idea, the ideas are coming from Miyamoto Miyamoto san himself. He said, We have respect we have to respect what Miyamoto Sound wants to do. Now, this is especially interesting to me before we move on, it's because I just watched a documentary or a, a documentary on YouTube about the making of Star Fox Zero, and Miyamoto did not have a good reputation on this project. Really? Because Platinum just thought that they were getting in for a to they just wanted to make another rail shooter Star Fox game. But Miyamoto, apparently, the reason you don't get a lot of Star Foxes is he insists every entry must be different. And then, so that's why they had to do the weird, like, camera control nonsense. Yeah. Because Miyamoto would, would, wouldn't would let it go. Hmm. Hmm. Which is, yeah. which is fascinating. That is interesting. I feel like that gameplay would translate to the Switch great, though. They would obviously they'd have to do redo the controls from my understanding pretty significantly. Yeah. yeah. But the game the game itself should be solid. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, I would love to play Star Fox Zero finally. 
I would uh, play it again. I, I, I mean, as as a huge fan of Star Fox sixty four, <clears throat> that was a it was a fun trip down memory lane that also had some fresh ideas going on with it. So, right, not as good as Dinosaur Planet, obviously, but <laughs> up there is with the like accelerometers on the Switch that they haven't done like a Switch game that you can legitimately like move around and yeah track. like a zombie u that they did on the wii on the yeah. or not the wii but the wii u yeah like, i thought that was going to be a big thing with when the wii u came out with zombie u. i was like this is going to be like a a regular mechanic that it's going to we're going to see in many games in the future and we never did yeah it was the active reload of the wii u <laughs> then it got I, do you remember when that game got uh zombie u got ported to xbox yeah and, like, i still didn't play it. forgot <laughs> Oh, I, I like, did oh, play yeah, it. Oh, that's there? On a I think I played, like, the first couple missions, and I'm like, wow, this does not work. There was, there was there's some bug, I remember, that annoyed, annoyed me so much I stopped playing it. Hmm. But I would play Star Fox Zero again. That was, that was great fun. Yeah. But then, but I guess back on the, the, because that's the last Wii U game that matters, right? That's not over? I couldn't think of another like original Nintendo property on Wii U because we got Wind Waker. Well, that, I mean, that was even got... a GameCube. That was a GameCube game, right? Yeah. Oh, we don't. We did not get Wind Waker, but it was. That, yeah, that's a GameCube game. We got Wind Waker on Wii U. Right. That's what I was. That's what I was getting. Oh, you know, mean, we... oh, like the Zelda HDs? Yeah, I guess there's that Twilight yeah. Princess and Wind Waker HD. Mm-hmm. But as Super Mario as... 3D World, we got Mario right. Kart 8. We got. It's just, just Star Fox Zero and the Devil's Third. Yeah. <laughs> and no one cares about the Devil's Third. Hey, hey, hey now. I Nobody. do. Nobody. No, yeah. I care. Anyway, Hideki Kimiya, Twitter's own Hideki Kimiya, <laughs> weighed in on Bayonetta 3 and said, ultimately, it's not our decision what to say and when to say it. There's no need to worry. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about this time. At this time, everything's okay. It's up to Nintendo to decide when to release more info. That last part is fascinating to me. What the hell are they waiting for? Well, to be clear, that that last one, it's up to Nintendo to decide when to release more info, is not a quote from Kamiya. He didn't say that. I, that was that was me extrapolating from the from the article. That uh, um, yeah, it's 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 not up to um, it's it's not up to uh, Platinum to re- release this information. It's all up to Nintendo. It's in their cart, which is crazy. Yeah, what are they, yeah, what are they what are they waiting for? The right time. Well, for it to not be September maybe? I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I mean seriously like just just from an, an email standpoint, my email inbox has been significantly diminished since last week. Do you, are you finding that as well? I mean, I feel like I'm still getting I mean, yeah, not as much, but it, they're, they're still coming. Oh, they're still coming. It's just like it was an onslaught. Well, granted my email was down for a, a day or two, and I came back and I had a hundred emails, so I felt a little overwhelmed. So maybe that's why I'm I'm uh, feeling that way. But uh, yeah, they're just they're probably just waiting for the right moment. But when's a bad moment when it when it, it comes to releasing a sequel to a very popular franchise? Yeah, and if not popular, at least beloved. Th- uh, that's fair. Yeah, I mean right. it's it may not be popular, but it's it's well known. Even people that don't like the game still are very aware of it. What, and it's such a fun Nintendo exclusive within their catalog, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's just sexy witches does not conjure Nintendo to mind, typically. I, I agree. I'm I'm actually, like, I was just sitting here thinking about that going through the Wii U, and it's been a while since we've seen an actual Star Fox game. I mean, granted, he's shown up in other things. Well, yeah, wow. Smash Brothers. But, well, I mean, well, there was, he, was like 2000, was, uh, there was like a 10-year wait before for Star Fox Zero. Uh, like Star yeah, Fox Star years? Fox. Star Fox, well, no, Star Fox Command was on DS released in 2006, and then Star Fox Zero didn't come out until like 2016 or something, right? Has it been that long since the Wii U? No, I'm not saying. I'm saying. No, 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 2016. It, it released on the Wii U in 2016, is what you're saying. Right. It seems like the Wii U has been longer than, what is that, five years? Oh well, the Wii U itself came out 2012, right? I don't yeah. remember. I just it felt it well, felt yeah, longer. Yeah, 20, 2012. I don't think Nintendo remembers either. 
Because the the last games I remember were like Star Fox Guard and Star Fox Zero. All right. Yeah, that was a little package, a little two in one package. I remember because I almost bought it because it was on clearance at Best Buy, even though I didn't have a Wii U. Hmm. I mean, we could have made a Wii U happen for you, man. I think there's one floating around between the ten of us yeah. on this team. <laughs> I just uh, feel that Nintendo doesn't care about anything other than like Mario or Zelda. Yeah. Because it's been a, it's been a while since even we've had some Donkey Kong love, man. Oh man, could you? Oh no, we had Tropical Freeze, which was a port, wasn't it? Oh, that's right, it was a port, wasn't it? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It's been a while since we've had some Donkey Kong love too. Mm-hmm. We're getting some Metroid love though. <laughs> not the not the game we wanted, but a game we're okay with. I'll take with. it, man. The more I see those trailers, that game is starting to look really rad. Yeah. Like I said, it's not it's not the game we originally wanted, but it's a game that we're okay with. It's true. Well, I want to remind everybody before we move on of our Patreon. If you'd like to help support the show and maybe get some extra bonus goodies at the same time, uh, be sure to head over to patreon.com forward slash the go cast. We've got, uh, well, CB, why don't you let everybody know what do we have available right now and what's upcoming? Our 12 minute spoiler cast is up currently and upcoming the, the long awaited um scott's first pokemon game yes i know we owed that episode back uh it, last month in uh, august we're gonna do that episode and two more for uh, the month of september so we will make that one up to you yep um we we are finally doing a new retro outsider episode on indiana jones games yes sean Coates has been texting me he wants to do the uh the super nintendo game that i don't think we knew existed until a couple weeks There's ago three there's three. Well, he was talking about the Infernal Machine, which I believe is on that 64. That is on 64. Yeah. 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 You have um, Temple of Doom, the two different Last Crusades. We're not going to play all of them, man. <laughs> I, well, I know, but I'm saying like that's what you have. And then there's um, The Greatest Adventures on Super Nintendo. Yeah, that's Fate what we Atl- learned about. Fate of so. Atlantis, and that was PC, right? Uh, and I believe it's also on console and i played the one the lucas arts one that was based on the last crusade i played that when i was a kid i loved that game that was great yeah, so i mean there's a few so we'll definitely we'll, we'll definitely touch on all of them i'm not going to say we're going to play all of them but we're definitely going to play that super nintendo one and probably the 64 one and as then well. we've also got my hot take on the the What's going on with the possible fraud implications of the video game collector market? Yes. And I think you were mentioning also on Twitter about doing a retro outsider on, uh, on a particular game based on a particular children's film that I actually grew up loving. Yes. Um, I recently acquired a lot of Nintendo Famicom disc games, and one of them apparently is a game based on the adventures of Milo and Otis. If you have not seen it, we need to watch the movie. I have it on DVD. Oh, so do I. We need to watch that movie and then play the game and just do a whole episode on that because that would be that would be hilarious. I don't I've think played it, I played it a little bit already. You're is it in bad? For a, you're in for a treat. Oh, sir. so this is going to be a games that aren't for us episode. Oh yes. Oh boy. All right. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to record some of that gameplay and and do something with that. So. Anyway, if any of those episodes or any of our past episodes sound exciting to you, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash the go cast. Uh, three bucks will get you one bonus episode per week and five bucks will get you two. And um, any level will actually get you a, a early access to our podcast a day earlier than everybody else. So uh, be sure to check that out. Like I said, uh, games that aren't for us, uh, Retro Outsider, legacy episodes anytime we do a spoiler cast all those things will be exclusive to patreon and we hope that you guys do enjoy them let's go ahead now and jump into the newer games that are coming out this week and the ones we've been playing zach you promised me this list was going to get shorter this week and it did not no, I think it's overall less intimidating, but I guess you guys can be the judge of that. All right. Uh, right at the top, we have Cruise and Blast, the next entry in the uh, Venerable Racing franchise, coming to Nintendo Switch September 14th. A uh, big PlayStation exclusive somehow being published by Microsoft. Uh, <laughs> is, <laughs> is that for that, real? Yeah. yeah. They own Bethesda. That's true. Oh, man, I forgot this is a Bethesda game. 
Yeah, this is a uh, one-year exclusive to PlayStation game being released by Xbox. Deathloop. Coming to PS5, PS4, and PC September 14th. Isn't that crazy, though? That, that is crazy. That could be the final Bethesda game on PlayStation. Yeah, no, Ghostwire, Ghostwire Tokyo. Oh, well, yeah, I forgot yeah. that that's still coming out. Allegedly. Uh, Eastward is a uh, indie RPG very much inspired by Earthbound, coming to Switch and PC September 14th. Skatebird is exactly as described. It is a skateboarding game, but you play as a little cute bird. <laughs> That's going to Xbox One, Switch, and PC September 14th. Fire Commander is a tactics strategy game where you command a crew of firefighters putting out fires. Coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, and PC September 15th. Cat Lateral Damage re meowstered. <laughs> Alright, meow. I just, I just love the way that you like inflected that. Re meowstered. <laughs> <laughs> Is is a uh, first person cat simulator where you're just causing havoc in your owner's home. That's going to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, Switch, and PC September 15th. What, what's the over under on Alyssa playing that game? I'm going to play it. Are you? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> D- Dustwin, The Last Resort, looks like a pretty uh, hardcore post apocalyptic RPG coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, and PC. September 15th, Titan Chaser is a weird-looking game where you're you're like in first person exploring foggy towns to find mythical titans. Uh, that's going to PS4, Xbox One, September 15th. Metallic Child is a uh, waifu shoot 'em up, it appeared to be. <laughs> Coming to Switch and PC, September 16th. I Am Fish, which I have gotten about 900 emails about. Seriously. It's coming to... <laughs> It's, it's, it's out of control. Coming to Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One and PC, September 16th. The Amazing American Circus looks like a somewhat gnarly looking uh, RPG where you're also simulate you're also like having to run a circus while you're combating like evil demons as circus members. It's like a, it's like a card battling game almost, but it's like you're not you're not fighting anything. You're you're doing things to appease the audience. It's yeah, like. It's- it's like a turn-based RPG where you're not fighting. It's just like you're doing things to keep the crowd happy. It's in- totally interesting. Quite quite something different. That's going to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC September 16th. Project Winter, formerly a uh, Xbox Game Pass exclusive, coming to PS4 and Switch September 16th. Tales of Iron, which is like a hardcore 2D brawler that looks gnarly as hell. Mm-hmm. Like just brutal violence uh, is a game about mouses fighting the frog kingdom that has usurped them. Uh, coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, September seventeenth. Nexomon, as the name would indicate, is a Pokemon off-brand uh, version of Pokemon, the Kmart brand, if you will, and uh, that's going to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. September seventeenth. What's that? See, we got got to play it and had that's a lot of Coromon. Really? Oh, is that Coromon? Nexamon is the one that Nate has already reviewed. Nexamon, yeah, is, that's the one that Nate played. Okay. My bad. Origami 2. Yeah, I think Nexamon, I think it was an early access or something. That's already yeah. out on Switch. Yeah, yeah this it's is a full release. Uh, anyway, Origami 2, the follow up to the stealth uh, action game from a few years ago, coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, and PC September 17th. Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom getting ported off of PlayStation and onto Nintendo Switch September 17th. In that game, you can play as the president who's stuck in a Studio Ghibli world, so that's weird. <laughs> and carries around a pistol. <laughs> <laughs> Toem is a bizarre looking black and white adventure game. Code to PS5, Switch, and PC September 17th. And then Song of the Smoke uh, is something that I assume would appeal to CB simply because it is coming to PSVR as well as place- or different PC VR units. September 18th. Guys, I guess I was wrong. Yeah, that's a lot of games. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, anytime you mention Earthbound, my ears immediately perk up. So Eastward, I'm going to have my eye on. However, I know how long those kind of games take, and I just I just know I'll never finish it. So I'm, I'm hesitant to do anything but wait. That's a shame. My, my brain is like, I can't start a game and then put it down. Like, I... Like, if I played Eastward for 10 hours and liked it, that wouldn't be enough for my brain. I would have to finish it. No, I know. That's a shame. My problem is I just don't get in them because I don't want to have that guilt of giving up no, on the game. I 100% agree. Yeah. 
Uh, Deathloop, I can't decide if I want to play it because the reviews seem so mixed. Like the critics for sites really like this game. There's been some perfect 10 out of 10s for this thing. And then I read some other reviews where they're like, it, it sounds like 12 minutes. Yeah, but, it's, in, but in third I mean, first person or whatever. If we if we're talking about reviews, I find them fascinating because the big sites all seem to be giving nines and tens, and then like the more mid sites are giving like sixes. Mm -hmm. So I just wonder what the discrepant like. What is the difference? Well, and a six isn't like a terrible score to me. A six or seven is still a good game. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just, I just I think I'm gonna kind of wait to see what somebody here thinks about it. Or I know a good I know a good friend of mine is sold on it after reading some reviews and kind of wait and uh, so I, I was sold on it until the characters started talking in the trailers oh really why i, f I just find them very the, very annoying oh okay i i'd be lying if cruising blast didn't uh tickle my fancy a little bit because man those cruising games back in the day were were great glorious yeah I, if i i just want to i want to walk back and just specify death loop in its original trailers looked like a very serious game and so when the jokes started coming, when oh. the characters started talking, it was a complete tonal shock for me. So a little too much Borderlands for your taste? <laughs> yeah, I would, I, would, I would call it the Borderlands effect. But I want to check it out like on sale. If only it was on Game Pass, wouldn't that be a thrill? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Get that PlayStation Game Pass. <laughs> CP, what yeah. about you? I don't need it. Well, Cat Lateral. I'll I'll probably play that, but I also kind of want to play Titan Chaser. Yeah, it just looks I different. Like, yeah, I like weird games, man. And chasing mythological creatures, deal. I'm in. I'm and if guessing. I weren't if I weren't like overrun with information about it, I kind of thought I am fish looked kind of cute. Yeah, but I just, I just like it's Finding Nemo the game. I think Scott, we're in an unfortunate position here because it really has been like, I think like almost two years where I've gotten an email or two a week about this game. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's, I feel like I, I don't know what's left for me to learn about I Am Fish. Right. <laughs> the fact that you're not actually a fish. Whoa. Uh, as for me, Tales of Iron would be the game I'd absolutely be playing if we weren't in between huge leases. Yeah. I think it looks. Anytime you take like furry creatures and then make them all bloody and stuff, I'm I'm in. Well, that's what you were hoping for. Uh, Bio from uh, boy, the Bio game is name is escaping. Bio, yeah, Bio, Bio you said it. Bio Mutant. Well, then that fist game that came out last week. You were playing as like the mechanized robot guy. Mm -hmm. I really want to play that. And then what a weird time it is for anthropomorphic murder games. Can we can we it, like do this where right. like we we all take a vacation like a week of vacation at the same time and we all just get away and we just like rent a cabin or 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 something and we just set up TVs and play do nothing but play video games and get caught up. I want up. to do that over the summer, man. I know. <laughs> it just never we, happened. Yeah, we need to do it in some sort of fashion where we're like in the woods with no cell phone signal, right? Like right. no temptation. Yeah, yeah, until we get there and then like half the games that we need to play need internet access. Say, well, like, well, you got to well, download crap. all the patches, download all the patches first. Yeah. Yeah. And we just I, take our consoles and our TVs with us, and we just get a, you know, pantry full of unhealthy tarts. snacks and, and yeah. beer. I want nothing but pizza Doritos, rolls. beer, Mountain Dew, and frozen pizzas. Oh, exactly. I'm sold. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm in. You know, I know it sounds like I'm joking. I'm really not. Can we? I would like, do it. Are you kidding? I would do it. Absolutely. Like spring break or something. Wouldn't it be an amazing annual trip for us, guys? It would be, man. We should just I'm, do it over spring break every year. Been saying this for years, man. Where would we go? Where would we go? It's got to be Anywhere. somewhere that's like, dude. I got a, I got a place already, so it's not that bad. Uh, I'm Spare. really, really digging this idea. We'll we'll go out right. to Colorado. Colorado. It's yeah. It's well, really we could. Nice this is probably not great radio, so we could probably talk yeah. about this yeah. off, off the mic. Let's go ahead and move on and talk about uh, a game that I am anxiously anticipating Zach's reaction because he's been talking about Tales of Arise for quite a while now. You're playing this on PS4, right? Correct, yes. So yep. you're going to have to educate people like me that have never played a Tales game. Tales of Symphonia, Tales of... I can't even remember the names of them. I know nothing about this franchise um, other than I, I was just told I had to play them back in the day. 
I was messaging a friend who was an avid gamer who had never heard of the Tales franchise, which blew my mind. Wow, yeah, I thought that was, GameCube was like hugely prolific, I feel like. Right, well, I feel like Symphonia and Vesperia are like the breakout ones, right? Mm, that's yeah. where I started hearing about it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but Tales of is, I, I mean, I used this phrase earlier in the show, but it's like the off-brand Final Fantasy. Okay. Uh, this, so, so in less amount of time, Tales has gotten to this being its 17th mainline release. Holy cow. Yeah, so they they knocked these suckers out for a while there. It would they would have a new Tales game out every eighteen to twenty four months, which when you think about the size of a JRPG is yeah insane. With like the same composer and stuff, like how are they knocking them out this fast? So to me, the franchise, with the occasional exception of like a Symphony or Vesperia, it always felt like fast food JRPGs, right? Like this. You know, the, this this quick meal that's probably not going to, it's definitely not going to last with you, but you can get in and experience the tropes if you want to get out. And every now and then you'll have a good one, but, you know, usually you're just going to get a whopper, right? Okay, so d- do the stories not interconnect like Final Fantasy doesn't, where each one is its own thing? Yeah, it, was, it, is, it is much like Final Fantasy in that regard. Like every every different, you know, one is not connected mostly there is the occasional exception where, like, there's a Zillia and Zillia 2, which was a direct sequel. And then uh, I know Ber- Berseria is like a closet prequel to one of the other ones, but that didn't really matter. So, yeah, they're, but they're mostly disconnected in their own universe, etc. Okay, but, but, so but, what's this? Oh, go ahead. I was say, but, but what their big standout thing was that it had a real-time uh, action combat when you got, when you, like, hit your random encounter or whatever. It would be a real-time game, and it would play on, like, a 2D plane, almost like a fighting game. Okay. And that I was remember that from big. when I was trying to decide whether or not to get into Tales of Symphonia when I was a kid. I was like, oh, it's like Final Fantasy, but you actually control the character instead of select commands. Yes, which, may, which means you're not really, you know, controlling your whole party. Right. But you can, but you can always, you could always play as all of the party members, you just couldn't. You know, you would just have to pick who you were going to play as beforehand, that's all. Gotcha. So what's the story in this one? So Tales of Arise is uh, significant in that this is a big engine overhaul. It's been five years since the last Tales game. And, I mean, I think you can just tell by the screenshots, you know, the the new engine they've built off the bones of Unreal Engine 4. Like, this game looks stunning. Okay. It looks like an anime come to life, you know, which is what they are going for. It looks, I think it looks... Absolutely amazing, and it's just got a, it's got like bigger production values and stuff. But the general the general premise is you're playing as uh, this character who is a slave, uh, Alfin Alfin as he's known in all the promo materials, and he's like trapped in this iron mask, and he has amnesia, of course, because it wouldn't it wouldn't be the a JRPG otherwise, right? However, I like it because they don't. He kind of just like it's just like acknowledge like it's just I don't know I feel like the amnesia is usually like the character's almost like whiny about it or like who was I and he just like kind of doesn't care mm-hmm. so it's a little bit refreshing in that way uh, but he but he's uh, he's a slave um, a member of this race called the Danans and they're enslaved by these people called the Renans which I gotta tell you startling revelation of the opening cutscene they're Renans coming from a different planet they're like alien invaders. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Don't I mean, expect just, that in like a fantasy setting. I know, but I mean, they, and they look humanoid, right? They're not like jarring to look at, but they did like, they came and conquered this planet, which is, yeah, you're right. And that's very atypical for this genre, especially mm-hmm. when you're playing as a slave, he's trapped in an iron mask and he doesn't know why, like he has to like eat through like poking the food up through the bottom of his mask and stuff. It's, it's a fun little hook for a character. Mm-hmm. And he, t- he ends up, uh, getting escaping the slave camp, meeting up with this girl, who whoever whenever somebody touches her, she just like conducts electricity and they die. So it's a little bit like the rogue thing where nobody can touch her. Yeah, but what a coinky thing because Alpha and our main character can't feel pain. Hey, hey, hey. we should get these two kids together. Yeah, <laughs> Oof. if only there was some light romance brewing throughout. Right. Yeah. What what a what a startling revelation that would be. <laughs> so uh, so it is like. Somewhat standard JRPG fair, right? You're, you're teaming up with the band of rebels. 
Uh, but what what I think differentiates it story wise so far is that it is moving at one hell of a clip. Like you're out of that starting slave village in less than thirty minutes. You've oh, wow. de- you've defeated the first of the five lords in four hours. Like that's it is, impressive, especially for right, especially for a very traditional JRPG like this, which usually has the anime problem of taking way too long to get the hell to the point. Especially with filler and you know yeah, this goofy dialogue is, stuff. This thing's moving. I, it was almost like it was moving so fast. Where I'm like, oh, like like you don't you don't have like any kind of like major twist that sets you back, and you have to like collect. You know, oh man, we almost beat the lore, but now we have to go collect these three pieces of a sword. That feels like it would normally happen. Like it mm-hmm. just it just takes care of business. Nice. That's refreshing. That's right. Very much so. And and the, and the plot hasn't like been super exciting so far. Like the overall plot, but the characters are really good and they have these little optional scenes you can watch in it like uh, a bunch called by pressing the R1 button and they're little like skits and those play out as like voice comic book panels which is a lot of fun for a guy like me mm-hmm. and uh but it has like these cute little like almost like very down to earth character moments where they just talk about like their favorite foods or whatever that you can watch you don't have to watch them if you don't want to but it just adds a lot of depth to the characters that's that's been fun very cool. And you enjoying the gameplay too? Like I've been looking at some of the battles. It looks very like dodge and roll. Yeah, it, it, uh, it does look that way. You're right. The the dodging is not as essential. It's not like a character action game or anything, right? It's not like your bayonetta out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if but if you can dodge, you take you know you don't take damage. You do a little slow mo follow up. But the combat itself is incredible. It's so much fun. It uh it. Like um like when I boot I booted up the demo a little bit last week and it, I found the combat just incredibly overwhelming because there's just so much going on. Mm-hmm. But the but the game itself, so if you have played the demo, you feel overwhelmed like that. Just know that the game itself is almost genius in the way it slowly introduces mechanics. That's what I want to hear. Yes, it it, it is remarkably paced. So by the time you get to that first major boss fight, four or five hours in, you you almost feel like a composer, like conducting this symphony of death. It is. It is great because you another can, game you described that way. Yeah, I like this. It's going to be a Zachism. It and is. It, it is. It's just great to to do. You just yeah, you feel like you earn every victory almost. Like it's just it's just a lot of fun, and you can and you can set up your party members to do, you know, like hey, if I'm less than twenty percent health, heal me. You know, kind of stuff like that to to help you a little bit more, mm-hmm. which is always nice. Um, and 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 you can play as any anybody. But um, Alfin has been who I'm maining, and he's fun because you do like a, you know, an upper. You can do like launch people in the air, which like I just didn't expect in a JRPG, and do a little bit of juggling attacks mm. with him, which is fun. And he and yeah, I man, you can do like team up attacks with your party members when a you know when a certain gauge fills. It's just there's so much going on in the combat. But now, do you have to keep rotating characters? You said you mained one particular character. Like, like in order to keep like experience up, or or does everyone just get the same experience? Or that's a great question. I haven't, I haven't had more party members that I'm allowed in a fight yet. Okay. So I don't, I don't know yet. I know there's only six party members total. So I don't know if that's how that fares for you. Uh, but but the experience, the leveling up system's pretty simple so far. You unlock these like it's almost sphere gritty, mm-hmm. I guess. Or like the Final Fantasy thirteen Crystarium, which means I was just gonna ask that. No was, joke. Okay, it was. It, I would say it's a little bit like it's like not as complex as the Sphere Grid, but not as simple as a Crystarium. Okay, so it's almost like in between, but it is that sort of like you know you can unlock these three you know th- connective nodes or whatever. Well, the, you know the what last you- question I'll ask you is: I was talking to Sean Fuller, listener of our show, and he said. Uh, of the horribly awkward podcast, by the way, he go. said uh, that since I loved Final Fantasy fifteen so much that he thought that I would enjoy this game as well. Do you agree with that sentiment? I can see how he got there. Okay, especially did you like the combat in fifteen? I love the combat in fifteen. Yeah, I would say it's I would say it's not dissimilar. Okay. Yeah, it um, it is the rare JRPG where. Because you you could see all the enemies on the maps. Because I feel like random encounters are probably just a thing of the past at this point in our lives. Mm-hmm. But uh, I am like I'm engaging in every fight because I just want to. It's just that much fun. It is it is that much fun, and 
you're unlocking you know new abilities and stuff at a good clip it's just it's just so much fun yeah a lot of fun so it sounds like you highly recommend this game if you like Japanese role-playing games, um, I, I've been making the comparison. It feels very much like a PS1 or PS2 JRPG. Mm. Like it, it, it just it feels like I'm like wrapping myself in a comfortably warm blanket. Like that's what it feels like to me. Mm. Like it almost it almost makes you feel like a kid again somehow. But but does it in a smart modern way, right? Because it's absolutely gorgeous and it's got this you know fun modern combat and and it actually has really good voice acting. Like Ray Chase, you know. I, I don't know if you're. Noctis from FF15, Scott, mm -hmm. yeah. which is the lead here. Oh, there you go. And he is, I mean, he's great as always. It's just, yeah, I mean, if you, if you like this kind of game, high, high recommendation. I can't, I'm only like five hours in or so, so far, but I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. And I like how I say only five hours because, you know, that is a good chunk of most games. But for this kind of game, I feel like I've barely scratched the surface. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely intrigued. I just know that I'll. It'll be a while before I get to it, <laughs> because yeah, definitely it's such a long game. Doesn't seem like it's going to be a short game. Yeah, I love that box quote, by the way. Wraps you up in a warm blanket like a PS1 it really, game. Oh, it does, yeah. I mean, I just have such nostalgia for that era of, especially that era of Squaresoft. And just, it, it takes me back there. Cool. Let's go ahead and move on. All right. So, <clears throat> I have a question, because apparently you've both been playing this. Um, you're playing a game called uh, World Flipper. Yes, I did watch the trailer. No, I was going to ask Zach if he actually did check it out. I couldn't. I, I did. We yeah. Talked to him. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Cool. So uh, I need to tell you. I need to ask you why. Apparently, I need another pinball game in my life. <laughs> well, would you like a waifu pinball? I have one of those already. Oh, I need more, more details. Off but we'll air, talk. Please. We'll talk off air. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, I watched the trailer for this and I'm like, mm -hmm. so, so first off, I'm, I'm not as big on cell phone games mm -hmm. I, and I will say this does look a little entertaining. So, so pitch me here. Like why, why do I need apparently to not only, but buy a iPhone to play this, but it's only on iOS. Is it, it's not on Google. I don't know. I haven't checked. Oh, okay. He's I, only I trusting thought... your format, Scott. That's all. Oh, I, I just usually put on the format what platform you played it on. I didn't put it you're on right, right. everything that's available. I'm sure it's on Android. I can't imagine it's not on Android, but I have to check the press release. But uh, yeah, the reason I was attracted to this was obviously because of the 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 pinball love. Uh, but I, <laughs> getting into this game, it's it's the core mechanic is pinball based, but it is loosely pinball. I mean, there's you're not oh, chasing thank the after. Lord. Thank the Lord you said that. I'm sorry. It's just. I know how much you love pinball, and you're like you're telling me to check this game out. I was wondering if I was doing something wrong because it's not. No, it's it's very simplistic. Like in the gameplay, you literally can play the whole game with one finger. Like it's not like you don't even have to have like a finger on the right and the finger on the left. It's just one button presses both flippers. It's it's that simple. The but it plays a lot more like a JRPG than I expected in the, in terms of its storytelling. So basically, you, you get little cutscenes with dialogue that you read, and then you come across a battle, and instead of doing like a traditional JRPG battle, you're taken to a pinball board where your characters are the pinballs, <laughs> and you go around the room smashing enemies, and you build up a power meter that lets you unleash a special attack, and um, it, it's just very satisfying, but it's not... You're not racking up high scores. You're not unlocking lanes. There's no drains. You know, it's it's each of your characters or your pinballs, if you will, have an HP gauge, and you're taking down enemies that have their own HP gauge and is strategically finding places to hit them in their weak spots. I think they call them soft spots in this game. So, but you've got this cool little dash ability. So when the ball is in the air. You can press the button and it will automatically dash the ball towards an enemy. So it becomes a strategy when a boss wants to do a special move. You have to get the ball near it so that it you can do a dash towards that soft spot to keep him from doing his special attack, which will much be more like Sonic the Hedgehog. There you go. Good way to say okay. it. But the the reason I was trying to get Zach to play this is I was not expecting a somewhat decent story. And I'm really curious to see what you think about it because it's it starts out really silly, but then you start getting characters, and I want to see what you thought. Yeah, I'm almost 
it's almost weird because I'm like, why is all the story here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's got a lot of story. I mean, they even incorporate like the the flippers into the storyline. Like the world yeah. flipper is a you know it's a capital noun, important thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think the story is like fun. Yeah, uh, it's it's hard to super invest in, but uh, it, it, it it's nice that it's there. My mm-hmm. honestly, my problems are more with the pinball itself mm-hmm. uh, because for one thing, like that. It's weird because I'm not a big pinball guy, but I almost wish it was a little bit more hardcore about its pinball. Mm-hmm. Because I I don't like the homing attack. Oh, all uh, right. I, th- I think it kind of I think the game would be more interesting without it because then you would have to be worried about your angles and stuff more. Yeah, it would be impossible I, to hit the top of some of those bosses without it. I'm sure. I'm sure it would be. You're right, and and that's just it's just not the game they made, right? But right. I was saying for me. I feel like I wanted more pinball, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I would actually hate it. Uh, but it does like the fact that it shows you your arc of where your bar will, your ball will go. Mm-hmm. I really, I really hate that. Oh, you hate that? Like it really, really annoys me. I, I try looking of... in the menu, and you can't really turn. You can't turn it off. Yeah, uh, I, I assumed it was going to be something that they give you at the beginning, like they did on Peggle, and then eventually yes. it goes away. And it just, I'm I'm three worlds into this game. Yes, there are worlds. <laughs> let you go through and it's still there so yeah i'm kind of with you i kind of wish it would turn that off yeah and maybe that would make me feel better about the homing attack because it, because combined with it aiming like always having your aim down for you it's just kind of like it doesn't really feel like i'm playing it it feels too easy doesn't it yeah yeah it does feel too easy and i will tell because you three you have- worlds in it still feels easy because then you also have your special attacks where, like, your main character will do, like, a huge spinning attack and it'll kill most of the board anyway. Uh-huh. So it's just, yeah, it just feels a little bit too easy, a little bit like it's playing itself. Um, and, and it's just, I don't know. I, it's such, I think it's such a great concept, combining pinball with, like, a, with a JRPG kind of thing. Mm-hmm. That, like, I almost wish it leaned harder on the, on the pinball. It kind of reminds me of, do you remember, like, that, uh, oh, boy, Heroes of Might and Magic game they did on XBLA where it was, like, it was Grid a, based, yeah, but it was like a puzzle game, right? Mm-hmm. But they took the puzzles very seriously, even though it was also telling this like JRPG kind of story, right? And I almost, I almost wish it was a little bit more like that. Yeah, this definitely has a Japanese flair to it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, you know, the, the one thing I do like with the storytelling, and this is something I almost wish was in more dialogue-heavy games, where all of the text dialogue is scrollable. Did you notice yes. that? Yeah, I do like that a lot. You're right. That's great. Like, like, so instead of, like, you press a button and it just disappears and then the next person speaks, you have the entire line of dialogue stacking as it goes and you can scroll back and go back and reread dialogue if you missed it, which, okay. why that's is nice. that, like, a brand new thing that's never been done before? I, if it's been right. in a game before, I've never seen it. It's a good format for a phone story. Yeah, I, agree. I also I also like the presentation a lot where it has, like, the, the hand-drawn character portraits, but then the game itself has pixelated sprites. Yeah. I think it's a fun combination. Mm-hmm. Really into that. And I like that the, it's not, there's some dialogue is like all voice acted, but then they'll do the thing where like a character will just say something in Japanese, you know, like hi yeah. or oh, nani yeah. or whatever. And, but, and then they'll, and then the, the character art will like change his expression or her expression to like whatever emotion they're feeling, which is, you know, I don't know. I, I just found it kind of delightful in that. Yeah. And, good, good presentation for sure. And I, I am kind of digging the story. Like, I don't know how far you got, but like each world is like a completely different aesthetic. Like, you know, there's a, there's a desert. Oh, okay. Area. Uh, yeah. I am, I am only on world one. I will admit that. Okay. Um, I just finished one that was, uh, the world was completely covered in water. So it's like water world, more or less. Okay. But, uh, you, you know, you appear like on the, on the deck of a pirate ship and then you have to deal with these pirates and it's just. It's just it's just kind of silly fun, but then the dialogue between the characters is charming. Yeah, I, was I, just, say, I was about to use the overused word on this show, but yeah, it is quite charming. Yeah, yeah. So well, I'm digging there's it. Like, there's something great about, you know, your main character really wants to go on an adventure, and his little sidekick gal is like, no way, but he convinces her, and then they immediately get lost. Yep. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. <laughs> it was pretty good. Uh, last thing I will say about it is there's also a multiplayer component which is not part of the 
like career mode or the story mode, but uh, you know you can go back and refight bosses like at a harder level of difficulty, so that you know, but you can team up with somebody else and gain more experience and everything like that. Now I got, um, I haven't done the multiplayer yet because I haven't found anybody else. I, I did multiplayer with randoms, but I haven't played multiplayer with somebody, and I wanted to tr- kind of do that and just see how it plays any different, but um. I wanted to ask you because I pre-ordered the game or pre-installed it, so I got a whole bunch of currency, and I just feel like I'm literally never going to run out to the point where I need to repurchase anything or, or I'm never going to have to spend any real money. I assume you didn't pre-install it like I did, so how is your currency level? It uh, It's not bad, but it's not great. Okay. Yeah, I, didn't, I certainly didn't get a in- huge influx of cash or anything. Like, I've had enough for a summon or two but yeah sounds like we have very different currency experiences that's for sure yeah i, I almost want to like take a screenshot and show yours and, and show mine to see how much more i actually have but uh yeah i said one more thing but there is one more thing i want to say i don't know if did you get into any of the elementals at all where like you can where you'll fight a certain boss and it'll say like it's weak to this particular element like electricity or fire or, yeah. or anything like that and then you can actually go into your stats and Rather than manually change everything to whatever, you could just press a button and say, change it all for me to optimize to fight against this element. And then Yeah, that's that's nice. That's nice, yeah. And then there's a skill tree that I have no idea what I'm doing because I just I pick something and then just say buy it and then I don't even like see what it actually does. So I don't know. But Okay. Um I did check it is on Android okay. as well. All right. So So you can not I download may... it and play it. I may no no I can, yeah I, more more than likely I'm probably not but you know what just just for you Scott I think I will yeah there so. is a there is a game on uh, PS4 that we have Zach that uh, um, Rollers of the Realm that is like it's another attempt at like an RPG with pinball that's actually a much more pinball esque experience where like you know you're trying to get up to the next level like to get to the boss kind of situation. Okay. So um, if you're looking for a more traditional pinball experience, maybe check that one out. I think it's like 15 15 bucks or something. And they actually remastered, re-released it with extra stuff recently. I got a press release on that one too, so. All right, that is World Flipper. I'm having fun with it, but it's one of those that, you know, if you're not into pinball, it's it's probably going to be just an okay game for you. But I think the story is is interesting enough, and the characters are are. Uh, I love the dialogue. I, I really do enjoy the dialogue, and I haven't been able to put it down. I've almost got halfway through the game, and still haven't spent a cent. So, World Flipper, iOS and Google. All right, let's uh, go ahead and talk about social media. Our Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the GoCast. We got new members over there: Taylor Noble, T.J. Compton, Josh Compton, and Wes Mulbash. Welcome to the community over there. Hope you're enjoying uh, the people over there. Also, we have our Discord. There's a link to that in our server if you'd like to join in the conversation and maybe meet us up for some games sometimes. That's a great place to go. And also, wherever you're listening to our podcast, if you could drop us a review, it helps us get the word out, uh, get uh, into more people's ears. And lastly, our website is thegamingoutsider.com if you'd like to check out our written reviews or any of our podcasts if you would prefer to listen to them that way. Also, an occasional editorial that uh, I have done zero of this year, but Zach has done quite a few. So um, be sure to check out thegamingoutsider.com. Let's go ahead now and jump into our From the Outside In topic. We took a different path for this week's From the Outside In topic. Since so much was announced at this week's PlayStation experience, we decided to talk about it in full depth. We asked you, the Gaming Outsider community, what stood out to you the most what you wished you had seen, and how you're feeling about Sony now compared to Xbox after the slew of announcement that was on there. We had listener comments from Facebook, Discord, and Twitter, but uh, we're going to kind of recap everything here. Boy, lots of comments. Who wants, a, who wants a start? Zach, CB, anybody? All right, so I mean, right at the top, before we even start, I wanted to start with a comment here from Silly Willy, who says, I'm tired of CGI trailers. Yeah, cool, you made a CGI short that tells me nothing, and your cutscenes probably won't even look that good. Basically gets you excited for a product they have no information on. And David Newman followed up a little bit and said, yeah, Marvel's Midnight Sun is a great example. Wonder how many people got hyped not realizing it's a turn-based tactical combat style. I'm raising my hand. 
The, the, I watched this... that and it said fur access, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I think I, the CGI trailers this year uh, are really starting to annoy me. Yeah. All around. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I, yeah. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but something feels worse about it. It's maybe it's the COVID thing, right? Yeah. They're not, they're not feeling confident to show their stuff, but then just wait. I don't care. It's getting uh, pretty it's, sad that the only trailers you get to see gameplay are remasters <laughs> because we yeah. all know what that game already looks like. Well, it's funny because we'll, we'll talk in a second. Sometimes you'll get a remaster and not get any footage anyway. That's, <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. What, what I, what I find especially annoying about CGI trailers is this trend of you, sh- you like a game we already know in development, and then they put out a teaser trailer in CGI. I'm like, great! You told me the exact same information I already knew. Yeah, I feel like I've well, learned. Jump right I, into it. <laughs> I mean, it's for great example, Nice of the Old Republic is getting the remake, and, and we, but we already knew that, and we already knew it was coming from Aspire, who has been knocking out Star Wars remakes. Or, or ports, rather. It's like left and right. And so they're kind of like the arbiters of Star Wars Legends in general. But yeah, it was just like a, a, a just like CGI cutscene of Revan walking towards the screen. I was like, cool. I know exactly as much as I knew before. That's about how much we got off of that weird... That, that trailer for that game that was like big controversy. Like, was it... Was it uh, um, oh my god, I cannot think of his name. Kojima. Was it Kojima or not? Remember that? That trailer we got was just a dude walking down a hallway. Oh, Abandoned? Abandoned, thank you. <laughs> it's like we got the same thing for a game that we've already played. Yeah, very... Yeah. I, I didn't know, because a lot of people got excited online for this one, and I just don't understand because... Okay, I, I'm as excited as I was before because it's the exact same piece of information. Right. The only I... difference is now we know it's a PS5 exclusive at console launch because... And you have to always repeat their wording exactly because they're doing some kind of PR mojo every time. Because mm-hmm. because it, it always means something. It'll also be on PC at launch. Um, and this has absolutely no no hint of release date at all on this one. In fact, they're still I, hiring, so I wouldn't expect it anytime soon. Yeah, like I I don't expect to see this thing for two to three years. Yeah, e- easily. Yeah. I'm curious and, what you guys, especially CB, thinks because I know you're like. We we love all consoles, but I know you you lean more towards Xbox. Original Kotor was Xbox only, right? It's never been on a PlayStation console. The yeah. remake is coming to PS5 only at launch, or or I'm sorry, what's the wording you said? PS5. Uh, exclu- ex- wait, launch? Yeah. Oh man, now I forget already. See, that's the problem. You got to remember these quotes. <laughs> Exclusive at console launch. That's what it was. Exclusive at console launch. So. Has this been done before? Okay, hang, hang on. Exclusive at console launch. So meaning it'll come to PC, but when it comes to console, it's going to come on PC, PS5 only. At during its launch. During its launch. Which which could, so, by the way, that wording leaves you, like, it could be for one week. Like, the yeah. wording is so loose. <laughs> I, okay, so I actually, I was working with my partner the other day when i saw this trailer and i showed him and he's also a big star wars nut uh-huh. um he immediately had questions oh we all and did. Sa- said something <laughs> interesting um based on who owns star wars so disney owns star wars disney right. infamously does not like to exclude anyone well, unless, it's it's like, unless it's with spider-man or wolverine well hang on we'll get there <laughs> Um, so at the time, because technically Sony owns Spider-Man. Right. Not only Disney. But only movie distribution, though. Right. True. So, I mean, there, there's funky leeway there. So I, so I think Sony has a little more bargaining with Spider-Man because they do own the movie rights. Be like, ooh, well, if you want us to do the things, like, we want this exclusive as game. But since Sony doesn't own Star Wars, they may yes. not get the final say for that to be exclusive to PS5. So where you say exclusive at console launch, yes, like, ooh, you get it for a day, congrats. Right, and I'm sure, um, I'm sure it won't be that short, but their wording does leave that opportunity. It'd be hilarious if it was. Yeah. And that'd be um, awesome. Yeah, it's just... 
with with something that is beloved as Star Wars, I am surprised that they are allowing a console exclusive. Uh, it, like that just like boggles my mind. Um, with the with the other one that we'll talk about here in a bit, like that also is surprising to me. But so I. I if I think the KOTOR remake being a PlayStation exclusive is a complete dirtbag move. Why do you say that? Especially, so both KOTORs were Xbox games. Mm-hmm. And now they're coming over to PlayStation exclusively. It really reminds me of when Rise of the Tomb Raider was an Xbox exclusive and everybody got mad. Lost it. So much anger. And then Knights of the Republic gets the same console swap, you know, lockdown thing. And everyone's like, oh man, I'm so excited. What the hell is that about? Yeah. And to be fair, I was upset about it when it happened with Tomb Raider. And I was upset and I had an Xbox. Yeah. So I, did I. You guys already know how I feel about major like major franchise be major franchise being locked behind console walls. I hate it. Yeah. Ex- especially something like comic book characters and Star Wars and things like that. Like Halo, Halo sure. That is that is your console exclusive, God of War. That is your console exclusive. But something that is a shared universe outside of your consoles, like mm-hmm. comic books, movies, things like that should not be locked behind walls. Especially when, ugh, I don't know why I let myself do this, but I go read the Twitter comments. Yeah, we gotta get off Twitter, man. I, I just, it just It just drives me crazy. Everything, everything turns into a console war. It, like... Just let them have one. <laughs> like, let them have one. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm with you. I think it's, I think it's gross. But I yeah, don't know. I, I, let them have one. They already did have one. See, so the Spider-Man thing doesn't bother me because it was, it was announced as an exclusive. Mm-hmm. But Kotor is a remake of a beloved game, very closely attached to Xbox in the, in its history and with, you know, the nostalgia of the gamers to whom this most appeals. Mm-hmm. So to put it on PS5 is real scummy. And to lock out that fan base, because yes. especially because it's a remake. It's not. I mean, granted, it's going to be like ground up remake, right? It's not going to be. It's yeah, not going to look re- like the old game. Yeah, no, and I, they're going to dump probably everything they have into this to just to be like, you want to play it? Come over here. I am you deeply, think we're going to have like a Final Fantasy VII esque remake of Kotor? I think this will hew more closely to the yeah. original. Okay. I, I mean, I, I, I assume um, that would, I mean, my preference would be the Spyro style remake where it's like shot for shot, but I know they're not going to do that because that, that combat is not going to appeal to most people today. Plus the success of Final Fantasy VII sure. probably helps with, with at least some, something new. I, wa- I mean, I really want the D&D dice rolling pseudo turn-based combat of the original, but I don't think I'm going to get that. Probably not, because that does that doesn't sell eight million copies in twenty twenty one. You know, no, no. Well, uh, coming off the heels of Knights of the Old Republic remake, we had a comment from Gamer Dad O three that said Star Wars Kotor, Wolverine, and Spider Man two all caught my eye. So I'm just glad I plugged up my PS five to start playing. I just need to actually download some games on my PS five. LOL. Um, he mentioned we knew Spider Man two was there. He mentioned that one. Right. Finally got to see something from that. What did you think, Zach? I'm I'm really curious. Well, I don't know if we, you know. I don't want to. I don't want to jump. Do we want to jump the order? I guess it doesn't super matter. Oh, okay. we're well, gonna start with Wolverine. Well, oh, I, oh, I see what you're saying. You want to go through the order of how they were announced? Yeah, somewhat. Okay. I All mean, right. it's no secret what was announced, but I, yeah, I feel like talking we'll, about we'll it. We'll circle back. To... Yeah, we'll okay, circle, we'll circle back. back to Wolverine and Spider-Man. Uh, what's next up? Project Eve, 2021 on PS5, Xbox Series X, and PC. That is a Zach Parkerson game. Yeah, <laughs> I call I called dibs on this while they were showing the trailer, <laughs> and I wasn't watching live. I think it was in the car on my way to Milwaukee when I get, got a text from you saying that you're calling dibs on this one. Yeah, I mean this game. So this game was announced a couple years ago with a little teaser trailer where it was basically just the main character walking out of a, like an escape pod or something, and they they made clear in their announcement that they were heavily inspired by Near Automata. And that is all the more evident now that we have seen some gameplay. There are no, there is no beating around the bush 
about what game they're emulating. So, so much so, I really love this. This is just a me story real quick. Yoko Taro uh, quote tweeted the, the announcement of this game just with the word, bye. So he's <laughs> on board. Bye. Yeah, as in, as in he's going to buy this game immediately. Oh, I thought you were saying buy as in goodbye. No, buy as in B-U-Y as in this man loves him some sexy lady action games. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I, outside of that, I think it looks, I, I think it looks great. You know, it's it's nice to see a brand new single player IP. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll give you that. So, I, and it's just is in a genre I like. It appeals to me. I'm over the moon excited for Project Eve. Yeah, I may I even tell. play it. You what? I may even play it. Wow, I think it looks Good great. Uh, let's see, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, March twenty fifth, twenty twenty two. On pretty much everything but Switch. I don't know. The more I hear about this game, the less interested I get. Am I am I alone? I'm I'm really tired of getting hit in the face with it. Because yeah. every time I turn around, it's just like Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. I'm like, great, Borderlands. Cool. I th- I wish they were leaning further away from traditional Borderlands. They're, they're, the, the, the general premise of first-person shooter, but in like a fantasy D&D world, sounds pretty rad. But it just doesn't. For it being a spinoff, I don't feel like they're pulling enough away from it. Mm-hmm. Like this could, if this had been called Borderlands Four, I would have just been like, "Yeah, okay, that makes sense." Yeah, I. Just the more I see it, it's just Borderlands with a different skin. Yeah, but not even, but not even that different a skin to me. Yeah, I wish the skin was different. Or- more different, differenter, more different, yes. <laughs> differenter. Uh, why don't you take the next comment there, CB? Uh, well, we also have four spoken. Yeah. You might want to mention the game first, Scott. Oh, well, that was so, good. Okay. Um, this one I actually didn't see the trailer for. Oh, okay. Uh, so I can't speak to it, but uh, Jacob Gunderson uh says four spoken and Project Eve are games that stood out to me. I've been burned in the past for getting too excited. Haven't we all? Uh, Eve got me in particular ways of the Nano Breaker feels, but I'm curious to see how Forspoken plays. So you guys may have to fill in the blanks for me on Forspoken. Forspoken looks like in uh, like a next gen game to me. I sure it looked stunningly gorgeous, and and we were seeing it like in full blown action, right? You're actually seeing gameplay, and you're not just a cutscene or whatever. Um, how do you describe this game? A third person. Let me let me do it. Okay. Well, I, well, the general premise is a wo- woman who is in like modern day New York uh, with her kitty cat gets sucked into a fantasy world, basically mm-hmm. real isekai situation. I think I was I was probably more excited about the game when we didn't know that. Uh, however, uh, it looks yeah, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Scott's right. It's like a it is like a uh, single player action game where you're doing a lot of high flying spell casting. It looks like it looks like you're casting like a lot of magic, almost almost shootery, right? And the mm-hmm. way it works, but but what really catches my eye is like how fast she moves across the world. She's almost hopping around, jumping like the Flash or something. Mm-hmm. Like she's Kinda really like, like infamous on on speed. Yeah, like the speed is what's the fact that this game looks this good while she is moving that fast is yes. is pretty wild. Yeah. CB, this one is worth going back and taking a look at because okay. this looks like a, in my opinion, a must play on, so, on so PS5. Did it, so, so this trailer, did it legitimately look like the old school vertical slices of games where they just like take a section and build out like some gameplay? Uh, they went back and forth between different locales and stuff. It wasn't like a nonstop running gameplay demo. You know what I mean? It oh, was man. like a, it was Remember- a cut. Remember back when they did announce games with like narrated gameplay segments straight? That was dude, I missed uh, that. That was I so exciting. That. that E3 when they and they or they'd have somebody playing it live on stage and then talking through. Oh man, one yeah. of my favorite E3 moments is that first Last of Us demo where it ran perfectly and the crowd was going crazy and then the Naughty Dog developer just dropped the controller like the mic. It just walked off stage. Yeah, I I do Baller. feel that as we've moved toward these like digital events, like vertical slices have just disappeared. Yeah. You're, I, you're absolutely right. And I, I miss those. Well, because unfortunately these CGI trailers are selling, they're working. So well, we're going to keep you, getting them. 
If I was Sony, I don't even like. I would just be like, it doesn't matter what we do. Everybody is eats er- uh, everything we do. Pretty they, much, this fan base is so deeply tied Rabbit. to us that they could have just and they could have put out Wolverine. You know, with they could never show us gameplay of Wolverine, and it would somehow still sell six million copies. I mean, I'm sold. See, do and, I'm not, and I'm not even like one of those people, but I'd like unless it's a. Tr- <laughs> You know, an XCOM game. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like Wolver- I'm gonna play Wolverine. Right. Uh but shout out to Jacob Gunderson, my dude, because the, these are the games that look so exciting to me as well. My mm-hmm. only hang up with Forspoken, and I'm sure it will go away past the opening hours, is her like when she gets to the magic world going like, Oh whoa, so cool, I can use magic and stuff, bro. Like just very it feels like a forty five year old man, like it is games written by Gary Witta, writer of Star Wars Rogue One. It feels like a man of that age, a demographic, trying to approximate what a 20-year-old would sound like. Right. And it just sounds corny as hell. Isn't so, Amy Hennig also on the writing team for this, too? Yeah, but yeah, she joined late, though. Um, oh, okay. but, you're, but you're right. This is going to be the grand return of, of Amy Hennig after fashion. Which, her name alone. You're right. I'm that, sold. That, that does, uh, but that's just like, and again, I'm sure like past the first hour or two when she's... Right, actually, like has to live in this fantasy world will be a lot but, more interesting. But but like her name is on the bill first before Gary Witta. Have yeah. you noticed that? Like in no, everything, it's like Amy Hennig and Gary Witta. You know what I mean? Which she's a bigger name than Gary Witta, at least in you know in this world. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Uh, Rainbow Six Extraction. I still get the feeling that none of us are like super amped on that game. Man. No, it, it makes me my it makes my blood boil to think about. I mean, just. Yeah. Tom, if Tom Clancy was alive, this would never happen. You would not be fighting aliens as the freaking Rainbow Six. Yep. This has no connection to, the, to Rainbow Six at all. It's utterly infuriating. Yeah, I, I honestly think this game probably would have actually done better if it wasn't named Rainbow Six yeah. Extraction. I, yeah, you're absolutely right. Steve. If it was just a yeah, like a just first extraction, person, just drop yeah. the Rainbow Six. Just a first person, like ah, oh, it just. This and with that, uh, whatever that Tom Clancy game with the XD in the title was, the punk rock shooter, like, it just completely alienates somebody who, you know, I, I always made a point to buy every Tom Clancy game mm-hmm. up until he died, basically, because then, it, cause then any semblance of what that meant went away. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Ugh. Anyway, sorry. These are just very fun tactical games, and, and those, they're dead. Well, they're dead just paid homage to like 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 the amount of research that went into the military side of those things for those games mm-hmm. and books and movies was impressive and now they're just like throw it all out the window aliens bro next we're doing ghosts right like like everything about it you know like everything Sam Fisher used was something that was actively used by the military or in development it was always that close 